Hello, this is Grandmaster Brian Smith. Welcome to Insane in the Endgame at the St. Louis Chess Club, where we discuss endgames. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, one of the peculiarities of endgames in general here, and that's that in the, end, in the ending, uh, it's very common to not want it to be your move. Whereas in the middle game, usually you prefer it to be your move in any, in any position. There are exceptions, of course, but generally you want it to be your move because you can do something. But in the end game, this is often a serious, uh, fatal even, uh, state of affairs to have to make a move. And based on this, uh, most end games depend on this uh, for um, the result. So a simple example, which is well known, the so-called trebuchet is this position, a very basic position. And whoever's move it is wins because you can lose a move by playing, for instance, as white, king e6, not king e5. After king e5, king c4, and white would have to make a move and then lose. Uh, black would take the pawn on d4. But white can lose a move by king e6, attacking the pawn, forcing black to respond, and then king e5. Uh, with uh, with um, then black having to move away and white takes the pawn on d5 and wins. Uh, likewise, if it were blacks to move, black to move, uh, then uh, it would be the same thing. King c3, king e5, protecting the pawn, and then king c4, putting white in sug song. Okay, this is the most basic example, and I hope you're still watching because I assume most people know this, but we're going to be covering some much more complicated examples. Let's start off with this uh, very famous and interesting example from an analyst named Centurini uh, who, um, who analyzed deeply uh, basically all of the bishop and pawn versus bishop endings and uncovered many of their secrets. Uh, this, I believe, was 1856, or at least that's what I have written down. Uh, how can white win here? Um, I'm going to ask from the... Uh, uh, from the, uh, um, I'm going to ask from the audience or from the people online. People who haven't ever studied this ending, hopefully. What kind of plan can white use to win this game? Can white win it? Is it a draw or is it a win for white? Note that the pawn can't queen because the bishop's covering the queening square. So what's the first step of the plan? We need to, well, we can try deflecting the bishop, but how? Or in the audience, I can't see you that well, but if you probably if you raise your hand, I can. So what's what's the plan? Bring bishop to b8. Okay, Trent says bring the bishop to b8. Okay, very good. So how would we do that? James says deflect and then obstruct. Bishop h4. Okay, very good. Aniket, I think, knew the, good, the, the way to win. So he starts off threatening to come to b6, or rather to b8. So if, for instance, black doesn't attempt to prevent white, if black just waits, then white easily carries out his plan, obstructing the black bishop. Okay, now the pawn is blocked by white's bishop, so white can move away. Black can stop the pawn from queening, and now how does white queen the pawn? Bishop g1. Bishop g1, yes, very good. <coughs> bishop g1, and the pawn, or rather the bishop, is uh, deflected away from a7, and white wins. Okay, but black doesn't have to allow white to carry out the plan so easily. Rather than bishop g4, as Aniket said, black can bring the king over to a6 to try to stop bishop a7. So king b6. What now? In this way, black king will come to a6, defending the a7 square, preventing white's bishop from uh, coming there and, and reaching b8.
Anyone? Uh, bishop d8 would just repeat the position. If bishop d8, then king would go back to c6, and we have s the same position we had at the start. Tariq says bishop f2. <coughs> okay, bishop f2 threatening, or uh, trying to come to a7. Black prevents it, and what now? Anikit says is telling us the plan. So when the bishop's not on h2, if the bishop's not on h2, then when the white bishop comes back, it will be attacked and white will gain a tempo. Okay, well, we, we could do that. Yeah, bishop g1 uh, or other waiting moves. Um, if bishop g1, the problem is that black would have some move like bishop here and white still can't come back to d8. So if then you come back here, black will go back to his safe spot for the bishop on h2 where white won't be able to attack it. So we need to use a different method. Anyone see another waiting move white could make with the bishop? To give black the move. If black could sit here, nothing white could do. Annie Kitt says bishop c5. Very good. Bishop c5 would work. Uh, I chose in my solution bishop e3 or Santorini also I think. This is, but bishop c5, the same concept would also work. Um, so black has to move the bishop because otherwise there's, there's no way to skip a move here. Um, so unfortunately for black, he has to move. Bishop g3. And what now? How do we continue from here? Bishop g1, black just continues waiting, and what? Let's go back to this position. Any kid says bishop g5, threatening to come back to c7, okay? If the bishop had been on c5, bishop e7 would also work. So either way, bishop uh, g5, threatening bishop d8, bishop c7, which would win the game. So black has to stop that by bringing the king back to cover c7. So king b6. And now bishop d8, king c6, and then as um, both Aniket and Tarig said, bishop h4, gaining a key tempo. First white lost a tempo, making it black's move, forcing the bishop to move to g3, and then gains a tempo for the transfer of the bishop back to b8. Now black, has, black can't take the bishop, so bishop has to back off or go elsewhere, but in any case, the result is the same. And what now? Bishop f2, Avinash bishop f2. Again, we're going back to this plan to go to b8, but this time black doesn't have time with the king to move it to a6 because of that key bishop h4 gaining a tempo by attacking black's bishop. So for instance, if king b5, then white goes bishop a7, king a6, and black is not in time, bishop b8, bishop g1, and the final step is bishop retreats, bishop a7, and black's bishop is now on the short, dia oops, short diagonal covering b8. This is the long, it has two diagonals to cover that square. From the long diagonal, diagonal, the bishop can only be chased away by opposing it on b8. It can't be deflected, but from the short diagonal, it can be deflected without white having to occupy b8 and block his own pawn. Therefore, bishop of two and white wins. Same thing if black doesn't try to transfer the king after bishop of two, then it's all very simple. Black moves the bishop and white comes around retreats to make room for the pawn to queen. Black moves the bishop to the short diagonal, and bishop g1 deflects the bishop then. So I think this is really beautiful, and just imagine 1856 when Centurini was uncovering these kinds of positions, and so were others. There were no computers around. 
people were just discovering basic positions like this and finding kind of artistic um, solutions. And this is the only solution. I mean, there are many possible permutations of the same solution, obviously, as, as was said, White could have done bishop c5, bishop d4, bishop e3, but it's the same concept. The only way to win is by this concept. Now, yeah, some people are asking, Jessica Pott asks, if you can win the same way with the c-pawn, let's imagine, can White, in this position you'll reach, but we move it all over one rank, let's just uh, visualize it, what move would Black have? Would black have to relinquish control over what would be the, the c8 square by taking on g1? Or is there some other move? Again, we're moving this all over one, one file to the right. Black would have one more file over here. The bishop would have three squares instead of two. So bishop a6, exactly. Uh, bishop a6, but here because of the ed edge of the board, white wins. So with a c-pawn, now the position is drawn to start. Um, there are a lot of rules about bishop and pawn endings we're not going to cover because we're just showing this example, but um, different positions, different methods of winning, but generally if the defending bishop has more squares on both diagonals, then they, then they can draw. Okay, let's go to the next one. Um, we looked at the trebuchet, and I'll show you a way in which I managed to use the same concept. This was a game I played a long time ago. Uh, well, white has some pressure on c6, and at this point I decided to uh, sacrifice on c6 and transpose to a rook ending or a pawn ending, depending on what black did. And here black went rook c1 protecting the bishop, otherwise I take the bishop um, and come back with the rook to a6. Uh, so here black now waited with the rook, or now it's white move, sorry, after rook c c1. I want to take on c6, but it's not yet time. So I played king g4. Uh, one tempo is, I need a, to gain a tempo at this point to go into the king and pawn ending. This is, uh, um, this is the, uh, the case that in a lot of endings that, that you, you may want to win, again, win, you may want to win a tempo, uh, or you may want to lose a tempo depending on the situations, and sometimes one right after another. In this case, I want to gain a tempo. Now, my opponent played this move, and actually he had some ways to try to defend by say, staying in the rook ending. Uh, for instance, well, at the time I thought rook d1, and then back here, and this position, this is winning for white, I believe. But he had an even slightly better uh, defense, which would be to first check my king um, instead of rook to d1, first check the king with rook g1, and then go back to do that same thing. And I think he would have good chances to draw. but. That's not what happened. He went rook c4. So question is, can I go into the king and pawn ending by trading rooks, and what happens then? Yeah, black's king is, uh, okay, so here, if I go king h5, as someone said on here, rook takes d4, and that would, then rook c6, the king would move back, and then f4 is hanging, and rook a4 is planned, so I think black would be okay. Question is, yeah, I, some people say I can go into the ending, let's, let's calculate. So I took, he takes, pawn takes, he has to deal with this pawn, so he takes, and now, Am I going for a race with king h5, and then his king goes, or am I doing something else? A4. Uh, um, if a4, I believe black could go king b6, and go to take the pawn. 
and, and it's another race. And I think it comes out uh, equal. I think both sides queen. So not a4. Aniket says f5. So yeah, we can easily calculate king h5. Okay, black is coming here. Takes. Which pawn should he go after? This one or this one? Yeah, black's pawn is further, closer to queening, and this pawn's also closer. So, of course, he's going to go here. White will push the pawn, uh, continue to push. King will have to move out of the way. And both sides queen at the same time. And then the game should be a draw. So that wasn't the intention when I went into this. So a lot of people are saying f5. So let's go f5. Okay, black has to take it, because what happens if king d6? F6, yeah. F6 would be the simplest. And then after king d7, white can just go king h5. Takes the h-pawn and supports the f-pawn. So he took here. Okay, king takes. And now, as usual, if black king stays passive, he's just going to be squeezed out. King e5, eventually the king will have to abandon this pawn because of black having to make a move. So he goes king b5. Now, this, is, this position occurred in the game. So what now? If king e5, and that's why I had to calculate carefully, because if king e5, black goes king c4. And what happens now? We each have pawns on both sides of the board. Nobody wants it to be their move in this position. I don't want it to be my move when I run out of pawn moves, and he doesn't want it to be his move. So what could I do? If I play a4, what does black play? Uh, yeah, a5 is possible. a5 is, uh, sorry, for black? Uh, no, a5, then what does white do after a5? Now black loses. We do this symmetrical, we move symmetrical, h3. Not h4, h5, but rather h3, h5, h4. And now white takes the pawn and wins. But instead, after king c4, a4, what can black play? A6. A6 is possible. And then if H3. Mm -hmm. A5. But uh, the thing is. Here, what's the result of this position? If a6. Mm -hmm. What's the result of this position? h4 or a5, people are saying online both win, correct. h4, and black has to play h5, and white goes a5, or black goes a5, white goes h5. So again, this position after a4, black doesn't want to go a6 either. This, and this is similar to the game as well. Black only has one move here. We should know it by now, right? Someone says a5 again. If a5, white goes h3. And when it's symmetrical, then the side whose move it is will end up having to give way. Hmm? A6, a6 uh, then we already, we just did that one. White could play a5 uh, or white could play h4. Either way, leaving black, so a5, and then black plays h5, white plays h4. So it's, people are saying, yeah, h5. So this one cuts down on white's possible moves on the king side with the pawn. So now and black remains with possible two moves for this pawn. White has two moves for that pawn. 
but it's white's move. So there's no way white's going to lose a move here. If h3, black goes h4. And then if a, a5, a6. Or if white goes h, goes h4, black goes a5. Or if white goes a5, black goes, what does black play after a5? Important. This was the key point why h5 was necessary. h4, very good. Taking away white's option of the two, two pawns. Okay, and then now we can see, since it's white's move here, a6, h3, and black wins, or h3, a6, and black wins. So all of this shows, now you can probably ascertain from all that, what, white, what move white should actually play here. King e5 would have lost the game. But I played, what do you think? E6. King e6. Now all the same positions, white will have lost one tempo. So this was, it was nice to be able to carry out this exact, exact the trebuchet in an actual tournament game, of course, with these pawns on the sides of the board. Uh, so black played king c4, I played king e5, and here he, he tried h5. Let's see some of the other moves. We already now know basically what's happening, but if a6, what does white play? Did he? Hmm. h3, very good. h3. And now both sides' pawns only have one move. And each, and there's no way white can, or black rather, can lose a move. So black loses, for instance, a5, a4, h5, h4. And king has to give way. Okay, what if he plays a5? What do I play here? I have now two winning moves. Oh no, sorry, I only have one, actually. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I actually do have two winning moves. Yeah, H4 or A4. A4, right. A4, and then black has to play H5, and then H4. Uh, or white could start with, um, after, after um, A5, white could start with A4, and then after H5, H4. Or is that what I just said? After A5, white could start with uh, H4, and then after H5, A4, or after A4, H5. Either way, it's very easy to calculate, count the moves. But, um, so he played h5. What do I do here? If I go h4, I'm leaving black's bishop with the choice of one or two. So we never want to do that. I want to keep my pawn having the choice, and if his pawn is going to have the choice, I'm going to restrict the choice. So after h5, there's only one move for white to win. And not lose, in fact. a4, yeah. I need to prepare to restrict the a pawn. In case he restricts me, so now this pawn only has one choice. I will restrict him. So his choice, his pawn only has one choice. And then you can see that either way, h3, a6, or a6, h3, black will run out of moves. So what actually happened in the game, after a4, he played a5. Now it's clear what white should do, h4. And the black king had to give away, and the game finished like this. I cut his king off from coming back, and then I played d5. So white can queen first, or even slow black down a little bit with king c3, uh, and then just queen the pawn, checkmate. So that's how the game ended, well, here, after d5. OK, so uh, let's now go to one of the nicest endings on this theme that I've ever seen. Uh, probably some of you have seen this before, possibly. I don't know how many people are on here, but it's possibly some people have seen this before. If you have, uh, let other people have a chance to try to guess the moves. Um, this was the game Henneberger versus Nimzovich from Winter Tour 1931. It's uh, 
Well, who stands better here? What do you think? In general terms. Black, yeah, of course black stands better, just in general terms. We have a strong knight against a bad bishop. The bishop is blocked by these pawns. White has a weakness of the light squares because all the pawns are, basically all the relevant pawns are on the, light, are on the dark squares and the bishop is a dark squared bishop. Black also has more space. White pawns are weaker. But you can have positions where you're winning but or not winning, but rather you're, you're better, but you're not winning because you can't break through. You have no way to make progress sometimes. So how does black make progress here? Knight to d6. Okay, you could go knight to d6, but uh, what's the idea? You want to attack the pawn on c3? White could then just go here, right? He still ends up at c3. Hmm? I see something from there. As in, go to b5 and then c3 eventually. Mm hmm. And then what? Knight b1, come back here. Someone says knight c2. Okay, then we go here. King there and then here. What now? Knight a3. Knight a3, okay. And actually, it is. Hmm, just a second. Knight e6. Immediate knight e6, yeah. Yeah, I guess you have to go king e2, king, king here, and then bishop c1, trapping the knight. What now? You want to sacrifice? Yeah, it's odd that I didn't see this uh, immediately idea before. I don't know. Okay. Knight to c2. I'm not sure this works. Let me go back though also. Knight e6, bishop d2, knight b5. Yeah, I mean, there's no choice but to bishop e1, knight a4. Fifty two, knight c two, king e two, king of king e two, yeah. Yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't, uh, I don't know, I didn't look at knight e six because I assumed that there's uh, that black has to play the way he he did. 
Um, 96, uh, maybe, let's see. Knight a3, maybe bishop f2 here, it may be right. But then there's, yeah, knight b1, and then bishop b1. Yeah, it looks like we can actually just wait with bishop f2, you're right. And then if a3, then white can play king f2. And then after king e4, king e2. King c6, yeah, and then you can... Yeah, king c6. King e2, uh, king e2. King d6, king f2, and doesn't manage to do triangulation. Yeah? Okay. It's not looking like it works. Just knight, knight d6, the immediate transfer of the knight. Here, yeah, bishop f2. Okay, what else could black play? So Tarif says king c6. So what we want to do is if we get this position with it white to move, what happens? The white king has to step back, right? Because otherwise these pawns are lost. And white can never play a3 because then black will easily bring the knight to b5 and all those positions will be winning for black. So yeah, that's what Nimzovic did. He did, um, he triangulated the king. White has to step back with the king because again, the bishop can't move. And so first success was to make it white's move here. Now white went king e2. And now, with the white king having been pushed back one, one rank, now was the time for the knight d6 move, threatening to come into e4. Okay, so the white king had to come back. He can't allow the king into e4. For instance, bishop d2, king e4, and if white tries to defend with a bishop like this, we already saw this, the knight comes in, and then knight b1, and white runs out of moves. For instance, knight bishop d2 takes, and king f3. So we can't, white king can't let the king, the black king into e4. So after king e2, knight e6, he went back to e3. Okay, black gained a tempo now by this. By losing a tempo, he gained a tempo. Now he continued with his knight maneuver. Okay, bishop d2. We already had this position when it's white's move. When it's white's move, the, um, the bishop moves to e1. But it's black's move. Black goes knight a3. Now the bishop can't go to e1. What happens after bishop e1? Yeah, now you can go into the king and pawn in. Even though the black knight is stronger than the bishop, sometimes you need to be ready to transform advantages. So after king e4, King e2, and now what? A key point that other, without this move, the game would be drawn. A3. A3, yeah. A3. And then the white king has to give way. So here, white plays bishop c1. What now? Very good, uh, Avinash. Uh, knight to b1. Okay, white can defend the pawn. Bishop b2, only move. Because again, you can't go bishop d2. The king in pawn inning is again winning for black. So white had to play bishop b2. And now, a3. Okay, bishop has to go to a1. I know what's happened. The black knight is trapped, but so is the white bishop. So how does this change the situation? And this was the only way for black to make progress. The immediate knight e6, as we saw, and because of that bishop f2 move, looks like what black can't make progress that way. 
So what has happened now? Both pieces are trapped. What would, if, what would happen if it were white smooth? Yeah, Trent says, now I think I might be able to triangulate my king in. We want it to be white smooth again. White's going to win this knight, but in the meantime, black will win that pawn if black can make the white king give way. So, knight to d2 doesn't work because black would come in here, but white would stop him. So, we don't want to give up the knight. We're going to lose, we'll lose that knight, but we need the white king going far away in order to take it. So, first king c6. Well, he did king d6, but king c6 would work the same way. King d6, king e2, king c6. And now white's problem is that white can't triangulate as well. If white tried, to, these basically e3 and d5 are related squares. If white tried to avoid occupying e3, then the knight would get out. And then after this move, what's the simplest, well, okay. Black, black could obviously play knight e4, but the simplest would be knight b3, taking the bishop or cleaning the pawn if white takes the knight. So white had to go back to d1 because, well, if he knew if he goes king e3, black is going to come in with a king anyway, and it will come to the same thing, but with black up a couple of tempi. So he went king d1 to go take the knight as fast as he could. Okay, now came king d5, king c2, king e4, king takes b1, king f3. Black's going to take this pawn. It looks like it's over. Black takes the pawn, moves the king out of the way, and queens the g-pawn. But white had a, still a chance, and he used it. Any ideas? What could white do? He has an extra bishop, at least for the moment. Bishop b2. Ailan says bishop b2. Yeah, James, I don't think this was new. This Bad bishops and triangulation were not new in chess at the time. But still, it was well known, but uh, still this was a very artistic example. Bishop b2. White frees the bishop. And now if black takes g3, at least white gets the bishop free, and then maybe comes to c5, and with d5 can stop black's g-pawn and push the Oops, and then push the a, the a pawn. So he played bishop b2. Black had to take the bishop to avoid that happening. And now a4. So now comes the pawn race. And here every tempo counts. King takes g3, a5. What do we play here? Black king clearly needs to move away from uh, in front of the pawn. But where? Take f4. Trent says to move to h2, and Joseph says to take f4. And Avinash says king h2. So if we're going to move our king out from in front of the pawn, in general we would like to also take a pawn, right? Um, okay, also big boy Shaq says king f2. So we can't be checked. So in general, if we're going to move our king out from in front of the pawn, we, need, we could take a pawn as well. But Nimzovich played king h2, which was more accurate, and we'll see why. It uh, makes a big difference. What, now both sides advance pawns. Now if we imagine the black king is on f4, black has an extra pawn, white takes on b2. Okay, white has to take on b2. Black, if the black king's on f4, black has an extra pawn, but it's a tough queen and pawn ending. Three against two. Both kings are open. So who knows? It can probably black should win, but it's it's not easy. But with a king on h2, there's a clear solution. In general, if we can go into a king and pawn ending, that can be mathematically calculated. Whereas the queen and pawn ending, we could say, well, it's better for black, but it may not be winning, or at least it's very difficult, and you're going to have to make many difficult moves for a long time. Whereas in the king and pawn ending, usually is just pure mathematics. And so Nimzovich calculated when he played king h2 and saw that after queen g2, forcing the trade of queens, now it's still equal pawns, but another race happens. Black is going to take f4, white's going to take c4, and then we're going to have a race of the f pawn and the c pawn. And Nimzovich had calculated that king a3, king f3, king b4, king f4, king c4, king f4, 
king e4, king b4, f4, c4. We don't need the c pawn or the d pawn, of course. Black just pushes, and queens one step, one move before white's pawn queens, and then stops the pawn. So this was a really epic ending. Um, just first triangulation, the invasion with the knight, trapping the one's his own knight. The second triangulation, breaking through with the king. And then the race of pawns to queen, the trade of queens, and then a second race. Um, yeah, and fortunately at the start, yeah, this knight d6. This, just to, to recap here, um, hadn't prepared knight d6 for some reason, but uh, it looks like white can just continue waiting with this. And if black tries to invade here, white can just avoid uh, with this, and there's no way for black to make progress. Knight b1 also allows um, this move. And if a3, then black can, white's given away, or black has given away the waiting move, so king f2, king e4, king e2. Um, and, and white would draw. That's why it was crucial, the first triangulation. It was crucial. Uh, okay, let's do one more. Um, let's see what I have. Oh, yes, this was um, one of my games from a few years ago. Uh, my opponent was a player named Dennis Wagner. And, uh, well, we start off with this position where I'm worse, obviously. I have two pawns against three, but it should be a draw. Well, actually, let's just skip ahead a little bit because I made a few mistakes and then I got into trouble. Uh, this was also in time pressure. Um, made this mistake. My opponent didn't take advantage of it. Reached this position again. And I, again here I played queen c6, which was a mistake. Uh, I had to continue waiting. Uh, and my opponent plays queen e2. And then I realize, okay, we're both very low in time, that um, f3 is a threat and probably I'm losing. So I took one last chance, which was queen takes g6. There's no way to stop f3 otherwise, other than queen a4, but after queen a4, my queen is stuck after g5. And I can't, I have to constantly stop f3 and stop the queen from appearing on the long diagonal or the third rank, and it's impossible to do. For instance, queen d4, queen c2 would be a good way to make progress, threatening queen c6. And if queen d5, then queen a3, and this pawn or f3 will come next. Or if queen b4, then queen c6, followed by um, either coming in with a queen or taking that pawn. So I took my last chance. Queen takes g6. What does black do now? He, play, he checks f3, king h1, that's the point. And what now? Does black take on f2? What happens if queen takes f2? And be careful. Many of us probably see the idea, but it's white's move. If queen takes f2, what happens? Queen g4, so you want to give away your queen. The problem is after queen g4, hg, um, or white has a move, hg, and then loses, checkmate next. Queen g3, the king, king can take. And now white, unfortunately, has to make a move, h4, or has a move. Queen g5, you're getting closer. But after king takes h4, black can take with the queen and avoid stalemate. Anyone else? There's, there's a move that I intended if he took on f2. Queen f6, that's the only way. Forcing black to uh, take this pawn first. If king g3, white can also force him to take the pawn after queen g5, and then next move queen g4, either way, or queen, or in this case, if uh, king h3, then queen f5 and queen g4 with stalemate. So of course he didn't fall in for that. Even though both players were in time pressure, we were playing on the increment until the end of the game, he wasn't going to fall for that. So queen f1. Okay, I obviously can't let him take my 
f pawn was checked, so I played queen g1. And now black takes here. Either way, the queen trade is forced and reaches this ending. Can black win this ending, and how, if so? First move is clear. OK, king g4. I move my king back. But what's the, what's the winning plan for black if, it, if he can win? Yeah, black could try to bring the king to e2. That's because clearly the king can't penetrate on the king's side. There's no way through. There's no space over there. The white king just waits over there. So the black king will not be able to go that way, so he'll have to go to e2. In the meantime, white can go after this pawn. So how is this going to happen, though? Okay, so black started with king f4. I went king h2. He repeated moves one time. That's fine to gain time. And now he made a move which I think he, well, because of the, ex the time pressure, I think he just he couldn't find the win, and so he played a move which normally uh, you know that you're not go you shouldn't play this move because now the pawn is one step closer, so it's a draw after this move. Be he only played that because he just needed to find some some move, and he didn't see the win, and uh, he couldn't repeat another time, of course. So how does Black win now? H4 draws. If black goes king e4, what happens? Yeah, people are saying a lot of different moves. What happens after king e4? King g3, right. Neither side wants it to be their move here. This is related squares. King on e4 and e4 and g3. But here it's black's move, so it's a draw. If he tries h4, well, then he should be careful because if he tries to continue playing for a win, what do I do here? Even here it's still a draw, but what do I do here? King g4, yeah, the trebuchet again. King e2 is, f if, if black plays king e2, then king g3. And white wins because it's black smooth. Black would be smart to go back with the king, though, and then it's still a draw because the king stays in front of the pawn. White wins the pawn, but it's a uh, draw and ending. So, so king e4 doesn't work. Black needs this position, king e4, king g3, with uh, Black needs this position with it being white's move. So what else could black do? Some people said king h5. Now if I go king g3, there would be king e4. And here it's white's move, and so white loses, because I have to move my king away. And if I go after the h-pawn, I'm not in time. He takes the pawn and wins. And meanwhile, if I try to defend passively, it doesn't work as usual. The king will be pushed out, and black will win the pawn. So after king f5, though, I have a defense. What is it? Yeah, I don't know how to turn off the, uh, it's not my computer. I don't know how to turn off the auto, the whatever you call it. But those moves are, of course, not always correct. Those are just very basic su suggestions from computers, so it's no point in paying attention to them. Very good, innovative. King h3 and Trent. King h3. Avoiding occupying the, the square g3. And then if king e4, king g3 once again with a draw. And if king f4, white repeats. And if king g5, king g3. So going back to this, well, now we've probably been able to figure it out because we already tried all the reasonable moves. King g4 only repeats to back to where we were. 
king f5 is met by king h3, king e4 is met by king g3, so we left, we're left with king e5. Now white's problem is that if white goes king g3, king e4, and we already know that white's losing there. If white goes king h3, what does black do now? This is the point why king f5 is better than king f5. King d4, again avoiding e4. This square is basically mined. You don't want to enter that square before the white king goes to g3. But from e5, black can also continue his plan of going around and threaten that plan while avoiding e4. So now if king g3, black is able to play king e4 and put white in zugzwang. King has to move away, then king comes in, black king comes in. If white tries to go after the h pawn, then black is going here and taking the pawn. And if white goes back, again, we already saw passive defense doesn't work. So the, the solution was king e5. If king g3, king e4, and if king h3, king d4. And after king h4, then this, and after king g3, then king e4. So, okay, this is, uh, the topic has been basically losing a move. We see that in many of these cases, you do want to gain a move. For instance, in the Nimzovich example, there were races where every tempo counted. There were situations in all of these endings where every tempo counted, but also um, a distinguishing feature of end games compared to middle games is that sometimes you don't want to have the move. N very often, in fact, most end games involve this, this theme at some point. Uh, so we, and we, we saw this also in bishop endings. It's not only pawn endings. It's very common in pawn endings, but we see it in, the, in, in other endings as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, have a happy Thanksgiving. This has been Grandmaster Brian Smith with the St. Louis Chess Club bringing you Insane in the Endgame.